Hey folks, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. Today we are going to be covering how to create basic dice. And this is going to be part of a longer series where we're going to be creating CGI board game assets that we're going to use for a overall project at the end for a product render, but this one specifically for dice and more specifically for beginners who really need to get their hands dirty with learning how to model and do some basic materials and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to be creating the beveled dice that you see on the screen in that thumbnail. If you want to see how to do that and you want the project file that's in this particular tutorial, if you go into the linked project file in the video description below, you'll see where it says CGI Board Game Design Basic Dice. And in there, you're going to see some images, some screen captures of what's actually inside the project, as well as the felt material that's for the table that you can see right here and the compositing nodes and render settings and everything else that you might need to know about how I created that thumbnail. And again, the project file that you're gonna see demoed in the beginning in just a moment here is also provided in that download as well. So the dice that we're actually gonna create is gonna look more like this. So it's gonna be a little bit more simple than the one that I showed in the thumbnail there. So if you wanna see how to do that, you have to sort of stick around, become a subscriber to make sure that you know when the new videos are released. But I used a little bit of a different method to create the beveled corners and stuff like that. And I will show that in a future tutorial as long as everybody would like to see that. So make sure that you put a comment down below if you'd like to see that. But we're really going to focus on making something a little bit more simple like this to be used in your product render and for those of you who stick around to the end I will show you how to turn your really cool gaming dice into a fuzzy dice like this so that's a little bit of a bonus at the end of this video so make sure that you watch the whole tutorial to make this really cool object like this right here so without further ado let's get started with the tutorial all right, so here we are in a new project file, and we're just going to turn off the camera and the light up here. And you'll notice on the bottom left, I have the screencast keys available. So if you get lost, you can just rewind it and take a look at what I did. That's going to be down here in the lower left. And we don't need the timeline down here, so I'm just going to left click and drag this down to remove that. And just a reminder, we're not going to be creating the more complex form that I showed in the thumbnail. We're going to be doing a more simplified version using a quad based modeling system and if you stick around till the end you'll get to make some really cool fuzzy dice like what you see on the screen here so if you make it to the end you can see how to do that and it'll look really really cool so what we're going to do first is we're just going to go into edit mode here by hitting tab and what we need to do is we need to slice this up into pieces so that we can actually inset what are called the pips the little dots that go around on the edges of the or on the sides of the six-sided dice. Now there is a way to project image maps and what are called normal maps to our object in order to get around the modeling part of this. But I'm going to show you how to do that later with what we're doing right now in the editing of this default cube here. So let's first start by modeling this object. So what we're going to do is we're going to press Control R, which is going to add some loop cuts. And if we roll up on our mouse wheel, you can see that we're adding some this way. And then down, you can press plus or minus, or you can just press a uh, number on your numpad, which it doesn't look like the screencast keys are showing that. But basically, I'm hitting plus and minus, and I'm pressing the 5 key in order for that to happen. I'm going to right click to undo that. And there's also another way that we can do this. We can actually subdivide the cube. If we press F3 and type in subdivide, you can see that we're subdividing it. And let me just turn the screencast keys off really quick. And you can see down here in the bottom left, there's a thing right here that says number of cuts. So if we move this up a bit, what we need to do is we need to have it so that on one side of these right here, there are six that we can choose from. So you can see right here, the number of cuts is four, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's really what we need. And on all of the outside here, basically, if you look at this, you can see that all of the sides here have four sides, all of the polys have four sides here and that's really what we want we want something that will retain this shape and a quad based system when we're working inside of uh, blender and most modeling tools you really need to have this quad based system other programs like solidworks and things like that will have a lot of tries that are used because it's more for engineering but the quad based system is going to be what we want to use for this particular object here 
Now we could have used the loop cuts that I showed you before and just added it on all of the sides, but this way with the subdivide works a little bit faster. So let's change up here our select mode to faces and we can press Alt A to unselect all and you can press A to select all. And by choosing these up here, we can go from vertex select, which will select these specific vertices. We can go to the edge select like this and we can go to the face select. And what we wanna do is select on all of our sides, the number of pips that we need. So there's six there. Let's do five here. Let's do four here. And this might not be exactly what's on a D6, but you can, you know, do what's exactly on a D6 if you'd like as to where they are. But really this is a demo to show you how this kind of works and you can, it really shouldn't matter because it's, you know, equal percentage chance to land on any of these sides. So it really shouldn't matter. So we have all of those pips selected or all of the faces selected where we're going to create our pips. And there's a number of things that we can do here. But what we really want to do is we want to use these as a way to inset or make a new poly shape on the insides of these. Because if we were to do what's called an extrusion, I'll just show you, don't follow what I'm doing right now. But if we extrude from here, E to extrude, right click, Alt S, and then scale that in, you can see that there's a little bit of a problem here. We have these that are basically uh, not going to work out when we add what's called the subdivision surface modifier on here. And this becomes basically an 11. So that's not really going to work, okay? And I'll show you what happens when it looks like this and we add what's called a subdivision surface modifier. You can see that it kind of messes everything up, okay? So we're gonna press Control Z to undo that. And what we wanna do is we want to inset these so that when we extrude in, it creates individual poly shapes. So let's hit I and hold shift and we'll move it in. And what we need to do is be a little bit careful. If I right click here and we take a look at our six side right here and I hit I and then hold shift, you can see that it's not making these planes, these faces here individual. And what we have to do is we have to hit I again, which will then inset the individual, whoops, which will then set the inset the individuals here like this here. And I'm holding shift to control this handle. You can see the dotted line that's sort of like shooting out from the center there. And we can left click to set that inset. Now when we hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S, because that's going to scale according to what's called the normals. It goes in like this. We now have the pips for each side. And to explain to you a little bit more about what the normals are, which is different than a normal map, by the way. And I'll get into that more when we actually do that. But if you go up here, and this is where all of your overlays are. If you go up here and you select down at the bottom where it says normals, and we select the planes right here and move this up, you can see all these blue lines come out. And that basically is telling you what face or which way those polys are facing. And a lot of people, when they begin working on modeling and they are shading objects, will start to see a lot of weird, strange anomalies show up. And a lot of times it has to do with your normal direction. If I hit A to select everything, then if I go up here to mesh, normals, and then recalculate outside, it should change the facing of all of these to the right direction. And just to show you again what that kind of looks like, if I flip these, they're all on the inside. If I zoom inside my object, you can see that they're inside of my cube now. And if I go back outside and I go to mesh, normals, recalculate outside, you can see that now they are in the right direction. So if you see some weird stuff like that going on, try that. The other thing that you'll wanna do when you're beginning is sometimes you'll have doubled vertices when you've accidentally uh, messed up your extrusions or at some point in your modeling you've made that mistake. So if you press 1 or you select the vertex select up here and if I press A to select all, let me turn back on my screencast keys here, and if you press M to merge by distance it will remove doubled vertices and you can see right down there it says removed 70 vertices. So at some point I added some extra vertices that shouldn't be there. And now everything should work out fine when I add my subdivision surface modifier and there shouldn't be anything weird. And <laughs> I'll just turn off the uh, screencast keys again. 
Down in the bottom left, you can see it says merge by distance. So you can change this to whatever you want. You can increase this or decrease this. We have all our pips. And what we want to do also is we want to create a bevel shape on the edge. If I were to add a subdivision surface modifier now, it might look OK. And you can see that these pips are now rounded. We have a nice rounding at the edge here. The only problem is that we can't really control how this shape is beveled up here. And some of you might want this to be sharper or more rounded. And so we want to make sure that you can account for that customized shape. So let's remove this for now. We're going to save our project. I'm going to call this tutorial two because it's the second time I'll be doing this. And we're going to add a bevel modifier. So go to the little spanner right here or the wrench that says modifier properties, click add modifier and go to bevel. And you can see here that it bevels everything. And that's going to be a little bit of a problem because how this works is that it will only bevel as far as the closest beveled shape, this right here, will allow it. See that? It kind of stops right there. All right. And you can change this limit method right here to the angle. But since all of these are pretty much the same angle, that's not really going to work for us. So what we need to do is tell the program where we want these bevels. And there's a number of ways that we could do this. We can add a vertex group, which I'll talk about later. And we can use this one right here that says weight. And what we're going to do is if we go into edit mode, press 2, which will go to the edge select, we're going to select all of the edges around our cube. So if I hold Alt and you left click on a particular side like this, and be careful where you click, you might accidentally grab a loop like this. We want to grab these sections like this here. So I'm going to hold Shift, hold Alt, and select all of these edges. And I'm going to turn off the normal so you can see this a little bit easier. So we're going to go around the cube. We're going to select all of these edges here, like this. Make sure you've got them all. And press N if you don't have it open on the right over here. And you'll want to go to item. And then down here where it says transform, you can see there's vertices data and edges data. And where it says edges, we want the mean bevel weight to be a 1.0. And that's going to change the edge color. If I press Alt A here, you can see there's now a blue color on the outside. Let's hit tab to go back into object mode. And then over here, you can see that we have the angle for the limit method. Let's change that to weight. And now you can see that these here changed. If we go back to angle, you can see that they're beveled. And when we go to weight, now they're not beveled. And we can change this amount now to be a lot more. So you can customize that to be as much or as little beveled as you'd like. And you can add a number of segments to round off those edges. To make all of these pips here round, what we want to do is add what we'll do also to make this a little bit easier to see, if we go over here to where the shading properties are and we press this little down arrow here, we want to click where it says lighting. Instead of studio, click on matte cap. And let's go and choose, let's do this one right here because it shows, in my opinion, it's the easiest to see how your object is coming along as far as the edge data and how everything is being shaded. So it looks a little bit weird right now and we're going to make this more rounded and smooth, but for the time being, let's keep it as is. What we want to do is add a subdivision surface modifier and make sure that this is below your bevel. If we put this above the bevel, you can see how it changes the information there on how it's being displayed. So the stack order over here is important. And let's change this from level viewport. Let's change this to two so we can look at it like this. And from this point right here, make sure that your object is selected, right click on it, and then select Shade Auto Smooth. And that is going to make it to where the areas that are flat should be more flat, and the areas that should feel more smooth will be rendered a little bit more smooth. And you can see that we can still see this, uh, this harsh angle on all of these edges here. So we can soften that up by taking the level of the viewport and the render and increasing that a little bit more. And now we have a more smooth circular shape there. And again, you can take this bevel and you can increase it or decrease it or change the number of segments. If we make it one like this, it's going to be a little bit more straighter as far as the uh, uh, angle change. And if you make it more 
uh, more segments here, it's going to sort of smooth all of that out. So it really depends on what sort of shape you want. And if we keep these all here, as we design our object, we can change these and adjust them at any point without having to go back and redo anything with our object. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some materials. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make these a fairly simple, a lot simpler than a lot of other people might do it, just because this is for more so beginners. So let's go into edit mode really quick here. And I'm gonna show you how to select some things a little bit easier. So let's turn off the subdivision surface modifier right now, and we're gonna turn off the bevel, and up here we're gonna turn on the face select. And you can see that I have, let's actually change this to something a little bit darker so you can see it. You can see that I have this selected. I'm gonna press Control plus, and what that's going to do is it's going to select more of an area. Then if I press F3 and search for select, similar, what I'm gonna do is select the similar area. And down in the bottom left, you can take a look at this yourself. You can see that there's area, equal, and then threshold. So you can mess with those if you'd like, but really you should be able to grab all of these specific sections. And you can press Shift G to bring up the select similar material and area and all of this other stuff here. So if we go here to our material properties, you can see we already have a material that's here. And we're going to press the Assign button, and we're going to change this name to Pips. Then we're going to press the Plus button to add another material. We're going to press New, and we're going to add or change the name here to Base. And what we'll do is press Control-I inside of the viewport, which will invert your selection, select Base, and assign that. And I like to click that a couple times because sometimes it's not exactly right when you press the Assign button. And down here where it says Use Nodes or uh, Surface right here where it says Use Nodes, don't worry about that right now. That's a little bit more advanced and we'll get into that later. But we can change this to a red color or something like that. Let's go out of Edit Mode by hitting Tab and then hold Z and press Material Preview. And now you can see that there's two different materials. And if we go here to our modifiers and turn those on, now we have our rounded cube and our dice looks pretty cool. And you can change some of these here. If you scroll down, you can see that you can take the roughness and change that. And then with the pips, you can change the color if you like to a black or any other sort of color combination that you particularly like. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change the render method. A lot of people like to use EV, but cycles really does look a lot better. So we're gonna change this, go to solid mode, change this to cycles, save your project file change this to the GPU compute and make sure that your GPU settings are there by going to edit, preferences, system, and then making sure you have optics selected if you have a ray tracing card or CUDA if you don't, and then HIP for the Radeon cards and one API if you have, if you happen to have the Intel card. Now, when we take a look at this in the rendered view, it'll look a little bit flat. And that's because if we go up here, you can see that it says, uh, lighting, scene lights, and scene world. Let's just turn off the scene world lighting. And now we have an HDRI that if you select this up here, you can select all of these different preview modes. So that's gonna be pretty much it for the first part of this. And if you're happy with what you have here, you can feel free to move on to whatever tutorial is next that you'd like to do. But for those of you who stuck around for the whole thing, I'm gonna show you how to make this kind of neat by making it fuzzy. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to solid, we're gonna hit tab, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our materials, select the pips material right here, and then select this button right here that says select. You can see that it has selected those specific areas that we put the pips on for. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add what's called a vertex group. And if you click on object data properties and you go to vertex groups and you press plus, we're gonna call this pips. Okay, and we're gonna click the Assign button. Now that's cool, but sometimes when we do that, everything else might still be within that vertex group. So let's do like we did before when we did our materials, Control-I to invert our selection, and then click Remove. And now we press Alt-A to deselect everything, and then select the PIPS vertex group, and then click Select. You can see that we have those particular areas selected again. 
And this is very important because we are going to grow hair in all of the areas except for where the pips are. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Particle Properties. This is going to be very basic. It's going to be a very basic kind of like, you know, check out what you can do with uh, your hair particles. Press the plus button. Go over to hair, which you'll see it gets really, really crazy. We're going to take the hair length and put it down to a 0.5 or something like that for now. And we're going to click where it says source. Make sure that you emit from faces and then choose modifier stack because that's going to take all of this stuff into account. Then we're going to go down to where it says children. And you'll want to be a little bit careful with this. We're going to click simple. Then we're going to, I'm going to display 100, but if your computer can't handle it, you want to do a little bit less. And you can see that now it's super fuzzy. And if you go down a little bit more and you see where it says kink, we can change this to something like curl. Amplitude, bring this all the way down to something really, really low. We just want a little bit of a angle change there. Frequency, you can sort of mess with this as much as you'd like, but we're just going to keep it right there for now. Then where it says vertex groups, click this down here, select pips for the density. You can see now it's just growing out of the pips. And if you click this little arrow thing right here, it will invert the selection. And the hair is a little bit long, so I'm going to go back up to the top. I'm going to change the hair length to a 0.25 or something like that, so it's a little bit more manageable. Then what we need to do is we need to create a new material. So we're going to go to our materials. We're going to press the plus button. Press new, we're going to call this fuzz. And what we want instead of the principled BSDF, we want the principled hair BSDF. And the color, we're just going to leave that as this red color for now and keep it as direct coloring. Go back to our particle effects properties here. And then we'll need to go to render. Change the material right here that says pips, change that to fuzz. And then let's take a look at this in the rendered view. And now we have some hairy dice. And you can see that it's a little bit funky. There's some patchiness here. And that has to do with how we have this stuff down here with radius and all that. I'm going to change this from simple to interpolated. And that's going to change some of that weird stuff that's going on. And now it's a little bit more even. Then when we go to our materials here, we can change this color to be a little bit more in line with what we might want it to be which might be this more dark reddish color like this. And we can change some random roughness here. We can change the roughness overall to make it super shiny or really rough, change the radial roughness. And if we go back to our particles here and go down to below children where it says hair shape, you can actually change this to be like a 0.25 for the root so that it's a little bit more of a finer sort of like fuzziness, or you can make it a little bit thicker or you can make it really thick by pressing a two there, which will make it look more like, I don't know, bear fur or something like that. I'm gonna change this to like a 0.35 and that'll make it a little bit fuzzy. And I'm going to change the children number here to probably 200. And I'm just gonna take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna save first, change this display amount to 200 and take a look at that. And that looks pretty cool to me. So, so that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you learned a lot, especially for a beginner modeling tutorial. And I hope you end up with something that looks really, really neat. We're going to be doing a lot more of these types of tutorials where I show you how to do a lot of things that are more for beginners, but also some more advanced stuff. And in the end, we're going to have a really cool final project that's going to be a product render where all of these gaming assets get used. So hopefully you stick around long enough to have a final product render by the end of all these tutorials. Thank you so much to all my subscribers. Thank you to my YouTube members and to you for following along with me and growing your Blender skills. Thanks again, everybody, and I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.